Right. It is two o'clock on this Saturday afternoon. I hope you guys got some coffee. Um, stay awake. Um, we are moving right along through today. We've got um, three more sessions before we get to Champions Night. So we are going to be uh, working with one of our own um, health promotions clinical director, Luce Conde. Um, she's going to be presenting on what makes you healthy. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Jennifer, can you start us off with uh, Luce's bio, please? Hey, Luce Conde is a nurse at the University of Texas Health System, currently works at the Electrophysiology Lab as the unit educator. She studied nursing in the Philippines and came to America in 1979 as a nurse. She's married and has three grown up children. She has been volunteering for the Special Olympics of Kansas for the past 10 years. On her free time, she enjoys walking in the park with her dog and her husband. She enjoys listening to music and cooking. Please welcome Luce Conde. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Very good. All right, Luce, um, shall right. we get started with our presentation? Sure. Thank you, Jennifer, for that introduction. Um, I'm happy to be here once again. I think we had a little meeting last month where we have to do this. And uh, just so you know, this health promotion that we're doing virtual, if you remember, we do it um, regularly. Uh, as a regular event where you have to go on different tables and stations to learn about all of this that we're going to talk virtually right now. So this is our new normal and we're going to have to deal with it until we could get together again. Yes. And Luz, we're getting ready for virtual health promotions, virtual health assessment coming up here in, at the end of November, December, right? Yes. Yes, so we are. So, um, all right, let's pull up that PowerPoint and we will get started. It's so nice to see so many of you attending today. I'm sure it's been a long day for everybody. All right, so um, our first slide is just our title, which says what makes you healthy. And it, it's pretty much comprised of different things, which uh, is, it's, it includes our nutrition, hydration, strong bones, hygiene, sun, sun safety, and physical activity. So we're just gonna go through different slides uh, one by one. And uh, I'm sure you already are all familiar with that, but this will be a good review. So uh, feel free to uh, save questions and we could talk about it at the end of the presentation. So uh, we could start with nutrition. So, um, in order for our body to be healthy, um, we want to start with good nutrition. So our goal is to have at least five fruits and vegetables every day. So what are the benefits of um, being, um, having good nutrition? So it's not just, you know, it's just, it's very important because it has so many benefits. Um, we, if you are healthy, you could maintain a good weight, gives you energy, makes you focus more, and it does reduce the risk of diseases like diabetes and heart disease. So having five fruits and vegetables every day is a very important thing to remember. So if you could make that as a goal, um, you want to have a, a very balanced diet and uh, going through this plate, you want to make sure you have something like grain on one of your, you know, part of your plate. You want some protein, which includes meat, fish, eggs, and beans. You also want dairy, which includes your milk and your cheese or yogurt. And then a big half of that plate pretty much is your fruits and vegetables. That's why it's, uh, you know, it, it, requires about five fruits uh, servings a day. You can see how big that plate is. Um, so there's so many choices that you could have. So we, we could go on the next slide. Uh, 
Jesse. Yeah. So, um, so if you follow, if you look at this uh, chart, uh, half of your plate will have fruits and vegetables. And then you could also have for your breakfast, you can have a fruit. When you eat your cereal, you could add blueberries or, you know, strawberries. And that will include, give you a serving of fruit right there. Now, if you make um, salad for dinner or lunch, uh, you could still have another fruit in there. And you just have to remember your plate um, is, you want to create a, uh, you want to have a plate that is like a rainbow. So it has full of colors. The more colors, the better. And if you decide to have uh, soup, you can have vegetable soup. Or if you have a sandwich, you can have a vegetable with your sandwich. And um, there's so many ways to, you know, if you like to garden, you could grow your own uh, vegetable. Um, I think uh, during summertime, it's really easy to make them, but you could always go to the market or to the grocery and get fruits and vegetables that are probably, um, you know, fresh, um, just like what, if you planted a vegetable. You can go to the next slide, please. So um, there's this something with the Special Olympics, they want to encourage you to have, to win with five a day. So if you grab and go ready to eat fruit foods, um, Sometimes it's so nice to prepare. Like if you go to the grocery and you buy a pound of um, blueberries, let's say, if you just clean them up and drain them and dry them and put them in little bowls uh, in your refrigerator. So if you get hungry, you just grab that. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, not having a fruit. Or if you buy oranges and apples like that, um, if you have them ready and clean to eat, it's so much easier. And um, fresh fruits, sometimes it's hard to find, especially if they're not in season, but the frozen fruits and canned fruits are also as, as good as a fresh one. Um, make sure you always have something in hand so you are not missing on your fruits. The frozen vegetables are also good. Um, if, you, if you like, you know, frozen, be, um, I mean, um, frozen peas or frozen beans, they, they are always available and you could keep them in your freezer. So if you get hungry and you want to cook something, you could always have a vegetable with it. So um, if you want, you know, you could go to the next one. Um, you could also track your food. So if you, if you kind of make a, um, a list of what you eat every day, and you could start counting how many how many fruits and vegetables you have. You just have to remember that your goal is to have at least five of them uh, in a day. So the next one is uh, hydration. So besides eating healthy foods, we also need our body needs uh, water to work properly. Um, our our body really de uh, depends on water to survive. So, um, you know, you, you lose water when you, um, when you exercise, uh, when you sweat, uh, even when you're breathing, you could lose some water, you know, with the breathing, you lose some water in it. So you have to remember that you need to replace all those water and you have to keep yourself hydrated to perform your best, especially if you are participating in sports. And water is the best choice for hydration um, compared to soda or sugary drinks. You know, you want to you wanna have water. Now for convenience, because your goal is to have at least, it says five bottles of water, or if you, if you don't, you know, you could use your glasses. You, you know, they recommend about eight glasses of water a day. But if you want to use your empty bottle, um, you could fill up about five bottles and keep it in your refrigerator and then that will, you don't have to track down. Uh, if you finish all those water in a day, then you have the adequate water for your body. And, um, you, you know, when you buy sports drinks, 
and if you want to save those bottles, you could refill them and put some water on it. So you could easily have water available. Now, if, if you don't like water that much, you could flavor them. Now, um, you could add slices of lemon, cucumber. Um, those are very healthy. It makes your water taste, you know, good and crispy. I don't know if you've tried those, but I really like them myself. I put some lemon, sliced lemon in my water. We can move on. Um, so if you are a, um, if, if you are an athlete, you want to drink water before or during. Uh, if you do workout, you want to have water before that or before your sports practice. And again, after, you just want to make sure you keep yourself hydrated um, you, um, water is going to be your number one beverage to drink. It's the best thing for your body. And you try to avoid uh, sweetened beverages. Okay, we can go, we can go on the next one. Um, so you don't want to drink water um, if you don't if you don't drink enough water, you could get dehydrated. So what's dehydration? Dehydration is not good for your body. Um, you will if you feel very thirsty, very thirsty, or getting tired or sluggish or have a headache, feeling dry in your mouth, um, and then you go to the bathroom and your urine is getting very very dark. Um, you could be getting dehydrated. So as soon as you feel these things, um, you should start drinking more water. But the clue is do not wait to be thirsty to drink because uh, if you do that, you, you'll end up uh, getting um, dehydrated, especially if you are involved in sports or yeah, being outdoor a lot. Um, you get uh, you know the sun and the activity all kind of kind of make you dehydrated or requires that you have more water. Um, so yeah, it's so it's so. Remember to have a goal of five bottles of water every day. We can go on the next one. Um, so besides, you know, all the all this good nutrition, wa good uh, enough water um, to be able to function properly and stay healthy, you also want to consider having um, foods that are help build strong bones. Um, so our bones, our bones um, requires a lot of uh, vitamin D and calcium to be strong, because if we uh, lose our our bone um, when we are not having a, a good um, a nutrition to support our bones we could they could easily break or you could get really uh, we're not going to be able to function very well so your goal is to have strong bones to be able to participate in sports and to be have a good life now, where do you get, how do you get strong bones? There are foods that you need to, to uh, kind of be part of your uh, plate or your daily meal, which includes dairy foods like cheese, yogurt, uh, kefir, and milk. Also, dark green vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, dark green lettuce, collard greens, and kale. Those are um, very rich in uh, vitamin D and calcium. Um, seafoods like salmon, tuna, sardines, shrimp, herring, and trout. Uh, they're very rich in calcium. And uh, you can also include um, healthy seeds like sesame, sunflower, chia, and quinoa to, meal, to your meals. So uh, you have to be uh, kind of be smart in choosing um, what you put, uh, what you drink besides water is uh, a drink that could help you develop strong bones. 
Now, if you are not able to drink milk because you could be, you could have lactose intolerance or um, uh, you just don't like milk, um, you can probably um, check with your doctor, see if they could uh, help you with um, um, giving you something to, to counteract your lactose intolerance. Um, make sure you read the labels. Um, you can have non-dairy milk if, if that will help you or if you like that better. Um, another way to have strong bones is um, being, on, um, being in the sun. The sunshine, um, they said 15 minutes of being out in the sun gives you a lot of vitamin D. So vitamin D, calcium rich foods, dark vegetables, all um, prevent um, you from having muscle pains and weakness, and of course, being, give you strong bones. So um, we will talk about it later, but being in the sun also, um, you know, can have some issues like, um, like sunburn and stuff, but we just have to learn about protection and how to prevent those. Uh, it's really important that you include special food that uh, gives you strong bones. Like as we talked earlier, you know, uh, foods like milk, fish, cereal, yogurt, and um, sun-exposed mushrooms. Now, um, if you feel, um, sometimes your doctor can tell you if you need to um, they're not getting enough uh, vitamin D or calcium that they could give you some supplements. But if that is something that you have to discuss with your doctor or the doctor will tell you that it may benefit you to have an additional vitamin D or calcium just to protect your bones. So as we grow our bones, um, um, if we don't have enough vitamin D and calcium, our, our bones are supposed to be strong, but then uh, inside it, they become, you know, they, they could get brittle and could easily break. And that's what you want to, to prevent is um, you don't want your bones to just spontaneously break or you can't, you can't participate in your sport because you're having uh, pains or muscle pains. And so those are the things you want to kind of, you know, watch over your body. Uh, and always feel free to discuss it with your doctor if you feel like you're having some symptoms of uh, muscle pains or uh, difficulty in uh, participating in sport. All right, um, we can move on. Um, so besides, um, besides the good nutrition, good food, calcium, vitamin D and everything, um, the other way that will make your bones strong is uh, activity. You have to be doing some exercise for your good health. And what is really good for bones is weight bearing and resistance activities. Um, they help support your bone health. So um, like you can see this, all activities, running, um, jumping, skip rope, and stairs. Um, you know, those stretch bands gives, um, they're like provide resistance activities, and those uh, help with your bones. We can move on there, please. Um, so the last time we met last month, we discussed about um, hand washing. So I'll say hygiene is very important, especially these days. And I think one of your topics today uh, has something to do with COVID also, but we want to make sure we practice good hand hygiene, good hand washing. Um, we are, we touch everything. Our hands pick up a lot of germs that we don't even see. And then if those germs got into our face, our nose, our mouth, then you could easily get sick. Um, so you want to make sure you wash your hands after using the toilet, after preparing, or before preparing, or touching, or eating. Uh, if you have pets, make sure you wash your hands, you know, after playing with your animal, your pets. And sports practice, um, 
always keep your hands clean. And I really recommend that after a sports event or sports practice, uh, not only washing hands, but it's really encouraged that you should also take a shower because you sweat in your body and everything when you're doing exercise and stuff. Uh, washing and cleaning uh, or showering will get rid of all those sweat and, um, and bacteria that could build up in your body. So um, remember to just, you know, keep yourself clean also, not just your hands. Um, and I don't know if you remember, we talk about washing hands for 20 seconds and 20 seconds could be singing a happy birthday twice while you're washing your hands or singing the alphabet song to yourself. Um, now, all, the best thing is soap and water to wash your hands or to clean your hands. But if you don't have that available, you know, all that sanitizer, um, the gel sanitizer. And um, when you use those sanitizer, you make sure you rub your hands really well and make it dry. So you know that it's clean after it's dry, okay? All right. Um, we could move on. Yeah, I think we just uh, so if you pick an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, you make sure you use the the one that says sixty percent alcohol. But you know, if you don't have that or whatever you have, um, anything can help. So, all right. So about sun safety. So you know, sun is very important uh, for us because. Um, it does, um, it does give us the vitamin D. Um, they said, so I say 15 minutes of exposure gives you a lot of vitamin D and vitamin D is good for your bones. Um, and the sun is really good uh, for, your, uh, for your mood, um, for it does help a lot. It makes you it makes you happier. It gives you a better. You could cheer up when the sun is bright. It's nice and pretty, but when it's down and gloomy, it kind of makes you gloomy also. But we have to remember that when we go out in, outside uh, with the sun, uh, you must apply some sunscreen. And you know, sun, sunscreen they recommend that you apply every two hours if you've been swimming or sweating or wiping it down. So you have to reapply it if you're staying outside longer. Um, remember to protect yourself um, from the ultraviolet rays. The ultraviolet rays could provide sunburn. And also they could, if you have too much exposure in the sun, they also um, could give cancer of the skin. So when you're, um, in the sun, you make sure you protect yourself with the sunscreen. You could wear a hat, a sunglass, and uh, have an umbrella. Or if those are not available, you try to go to the shade um, as much as you can. Um, when you are picking a sunscreen, you pick the one that's water resistant, SPF of 15 or higher, and they're labeled broad spectrum. Um, so as, as you know, to be safe, your goal is always to be safe in the sun. You have to enjoy the sun because it's really good for you. Um, there's hours that are, the sun is so strong. It's like about 10 to 2, um, that's the direct, uh, direct ray of the sun is uh, direct to you. Um, and so uh, those are the, uh, the peak hours. If you could avoid the peak hours, it's best, but it's not always possible. Um, use plenty of sunscreen with SPF 15 to 30 year round. Now it says year round because even if there's, even if you don't see the sun, and you are out, like there's clouds covering the sun, um, you still are getting the ultraviolet rays because the ultraviolet rays kind of penetrates through the clouds and goes to you. 
So, um, so besides sunscreen, there's also um, a lip balm that has a sun protection. Um, and I think, so yeah, so um, sometimes there's people that are more prone to sunburn, especially if your, your skin is very fair, uh, fair skin, you could get sunburn easier than the other. So it may not take a long time for your exposure um, to get sunburn. So physical activity, we've touched it partially, but uh, um, what's um, besides being, you know, outdoors and everything, um, and it's highly recommended that you also do some uh, exercise that you like doing um, at least about five days a week. So um, whatever you like best, if you like to run or walk, sometimes uh, bike, swimming. Um, those are also really good. Um, those are all very good. And uh, if you do about five times a week, uh, it, will, it will improve all your, your whole body, your whole health, your energy, your mood. Uh, you could dance if you like to dance. Um, you try to do as much activity as you can. If, you, if you're going up in a building, uh, you could use the stairs that all adds up to your physical activity. Um, when you drive and you park your car, try to pick um, a parking space where it's a little bit further so you could do some walking. Those, all those steps adds up. Um, you, you just have to be creative on how you're gonna get more steps to, um, to include in your exercise. Uh, like even in the grocery, you know, you could walk several times and do a lot more steps and that will help you. Cleaning your yard, walking your dog, uh, a bike ride, um, so many things that you can do um, to improve your health. Now, um, you know, it's very difficult these days probably because of our current situation where we are all restricted because of COVID, but uh, that's why I think we have to be creative on how to do our physical activity. And always remember that if you're outdoor and um, if you're with other people, that you always have to learn how to protect yourself. And I think that was discussed from our last talk last, last month, where you, you make sure you know you have your, your mask so you're not, um, getting you're not getting germs from other people or you're giving germs to others um, so but that shouldn't prevent us from doing any physical activity you could do physical activity in your own home going up and down the stairs and i say dancing and just walking laps around your house so just learn to be creative to be physically active okay um and um, this is this is so easy to do, I think. And sometimes I'm guilty also. We, we like sometimes to get stuck and watch TV or stay on our phone. Um, screen time, they call it a screen time. And those kind of prevents, uh, prevent us from doing more physical activity. And so um, being in a computer, in a smartphone, playing video games. So um, I think this is something that we need to learn to limit. And um, like, you know, um, th this is preventing us from to doing our own our physical activity. Okay, so so why do we want to be, um, why do we want to make sure we have physical activity? Uh, it has so many benefits. So it makes your heart and lungs stronger. So when you are walking and running, you're making your heart pump harder and pumping it harder uh, is, is making your heart healthier. It's building the muscles in your heart and everything. And um, so it's very important to really 
uh, do all those exercises. It helps your arteries and your veins to smooth and clear, good blood flow. Um, it, it reduces your blood sugar levels. It helps you control your weight and reduce your food cravings. It also, all those physical activity, exercise helps you um, build strong bones and muscles. Now, um, now it says it prevents cancer and you know, there's so many, there's so many cause of cancer, uh, but being proactive and being um, active with physical activity will cut down your chances of getting some kind of cancer. Um, it gives you a good blood pressure, especially if your heart is pumping really good. Uh, with those activity, your blood pressure is also good. And uh, the more you exercise, you know, five days a week, don't overdo it, um, the more you feel energetic. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're happy, uh, it makes you emotionally well, you feel more satisfied, more um, calm and able to enjoy your day better. So try to do activities. So so sometimes it could be boring, right? But if you try to plan to walk with your family um, or with a close friend, um, that will help you not make it so boring. So, or you could you could you know you guys have been doing this uh, Zoom exercise, which is really nice because I've seen some of them where you participate in some physical activity while you are in Zoom with just, you know, arm exercise and leg exercises. Um, those are all very good. So as I say, this, this time of our, our um, life, we have to be very creative to be able to do all of these things so we could be healthy. Okay, I think that is our last slide, Jesse. So um, before you play that, Jesse, I just wanna, say something about, uh, so I know we, we talk about everything, six things that could make us really healthy. And that includes good nutrition, um, our um, hydration, our physical activity, hygiene, sun safety, and strong bones. But, um, you know, I don't know if you, I'm sure everybody is, but I do. We, we could feel some tension in ourselves. There's worries that we, you know, we could, we could be thinking of some stuff that we get so worried and it, it prevents us from relaxing and, you know, focusing on what we need to do. So um, there's always this thing that they say, you, you do some, you probably have heard it, take some deep breaths in and out that will calm you down. But I found this really good, um, you know, good um, video from a doctor, um, Dr. Jude Brewer, who, um, who has given this very nice advice about simple and effective exercise to help you calm and focus and cut down if you're feeling so tense and anxious. Um, you can try this. Um, it, it's a very good one and um, you could do it with your family. So we could listen to his video. Uh, I really like this one and then we could try playing it. Um, go ahead, Desi. It's called the five finger breathing. Let's do it together and then I'll tell you how it works. Start by placing the index finger on one hand on the outside of your pinky on the other hand. As you breathe in, trace up the outside of your pinky. As you breathe out, trace down the inside of your pinky. As you breathe in, trace up the outside of your ring finger. As you breathe out, trace down the inside of your ring finger. As you breathe in, trace up the outside of your middle finger. As you breathe out, trace down the inside of your middle finger. 
You can continue this and you trace your entire hand, and then you can reverse the process going from your thumb to your pinky. Okay, so um, what, do you, what do you think, what is so cool about this exercise um, is um, it brings your, you know, how the most common deep breathing is uh, you relax. But this exercise, it brings several senses. So you could, um, you could feel your, your, yourself, your, just a sense of feeling, and then the deep breathing. So you could feel your lungs and um, just try to keep yourself calm and relaxed. Um, so do you guys want to try to do it? And I could just kind of, kind of coach you into it. So, so put your hand up and uh, your index finger touch your pinky and then as you breathe in bring up your hand to the tip of your pinky as you breathe out you bring down your finger and then breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. So uh, you could do this as a family uh, together just to stay focused and relax, kind of help you calm down. If you are so worried and anxious and, and you don't know what to do and you're freaking out and you just want to relax a little bit and focus on what you think you're supposed to be doing, you will you will um, kind of feel the difference when after you do this one. So, yeah, uh, I think um, if if I have something for you to take away with this, besides all the six healthy things that we need to do to be healthy, I would say include this as your number seven because it will help you uh, release your anxiety and your worries and make you relax. And I think that's the end of my presentation so now uh, i guess we could take yes some thank you liz that was wonderful very good very good all right so we have a few minutes for questions um i think there's uh, some Mike's questions in the chat. so unmute yourself ask a question and uh, we've got uh, looks like seven minutes the question in the chat i think let's see a lot of thank yous Tyler, did you have a question about sun? Yes, I did. I posted, what is a sun poison? Um, you know, I'm not sure if that was the, the, the sunburn um, terminology. I haven't encountered a sun poison, but I would just say too much sun. Um, the, the, the sun has ultraviolet rays. And if you are exposed to too much sun, uh, you you could get um, skin cancer like melanoma or also um, sunburn and all and the other thing sun also affects your eyes so as you get older you get uh, you get cataract surgery cataracts and that cataract is due to the sun so if you are playing outside or working outside you make sure you have sunglasses to protect your sun but I have to read more about the, the terminology sun poison because I, I haven't even encountered it being used as a sun poison. Well, when, well, we was at Scatterbomb in Kansas City. It's the name of the water park. Uh -huh. when we got back home, like my body said, okay, I'm not feeling well. I got a bunch of sunburn. And we forgot to wear a sunscreen and said, I talked to my friend, mother, I said, Oh, I think it will be still cloudy, no sun come out. And well, it, Jennifer said, well, my friend Jennifer from Missouri, and it said, I think we don't need where sunscreen is like, well, we got sunburn, we got home, like when it, my dad said, yep, you got a little bit sun poison. And it said, I say, make sure I go swimming or go to water park, make sure wear sunscreen. I don't want to get sunburn or get skin cancer. 
Correct. And, and that's what I was saying is uh, even if you don't see the sun, like it's very cloudy, um, there is still, uh, there's still sun, sun in there. Um, the ultraviolet rays kind of penetrates into the clouds and gets into you. So it doesn't mean that uh, you're not getting any sun because there's no, no sun. It's not bright enough. Yeah. Anything else? Becca. Um, I got a question about uh, moles. Could like, how can you protect your moles if you have a lot of moles on your arms and legs, or in your face? And how can so, you protect it? So you really and what do you suggest? Um, that's a good question. You you really have just have to follow the same thing. Uh, make sure you have sunscreen. You have sun protection. You have hats and stuff. Now, what you need to keep an eye is your moles. And I'm sure if you have really big moles, um, your doctor could probably tell you, let me know if this change color, if it gets bigger or it starts to get red or painful. So those moles, um, it, it, you just observe them and make sure you notify your doctor if there's some changes in them. But you always use sun protection, whether you, know, you have a mole or not. That Thank helps. you so much. You're welcome, Becca. Good to see you again. That's me too. Very good. Yes, and uh, Lucy will also be with us again in December as well. Um, athletes or family members, any any other questions, comments um, that you'd like to share with Luz before we um, close here at two forty-five? If not, that's also okay. So um, we have a lot of people who are saying in the chat, thank you so much for the information. This was very valuable. Um, thank you so much, Luz, for doing what you do. And thank you so much for your service to Special Olympics Kansas. Luz, you have some special news coming up in December. Do you want to share that with everyone? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm really happy that I get to talk with you again. But uh, I don't know, is, is, is it something about my retirement? Yes, you're retiring in December as a nurse. I am, uh, I am retiring in KU. I've been working there for 40 years, but I've been a nurse for about 44 years. So I thought I'm going to retire, <laughs> although I'll, con I'll continue to help out with Special Olympics. So. Very good. Hi, Chris. Haven't seen Chris for a long time. We gotta, we gotta do our, we gotta get back to our health promotion event. That's what I'm missing. I know. I, I like it better than this. I miss I mean, it. I'll do this too, but uh, we do what we can, right? <laughs> True. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing this fall. I, we appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I, I'm so happy that I could be of uh, help to all of you. I really enjoy it too. Awesome. Alrighty. So that will conclude this session. Uh, we'll move into our door prizes and um, everyone's been entered in for one of two Xbox Series X's. Thank you so much, Louis, for coming out today okay. and doing okay. this. Okay. Have a good con um, con rest of the event, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, and yeah. this officially concludes the health portion of our virtual health and leadership forum. So I'm going to pass it over to Chris. We're going to talk about uh, Special Olympics Kansas strategic plan, I believe at three o'clock and uh, sports, and then finally moving into Champions Night. So go ahead and take it away, Chris. Uh, let us know what we're doing. Yeah, first, first, uh, Teresa Inneking, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing your last name right, Teresa, but you were our 